We speculated a lot, haven't we, over the last few days. His record just not good enough after picking up the baton from Arsene Wenger. Uh, very different, of course, to the Pochettino scenario, Craig, which I think everyone was surprised about. This one, not really a surprise. No, not really when you look at results. Uh, he had a period last year where they went on a great run and it kind of papered over the cracks a little bit. You go away in the summer and you think, right, regroup uh, with a plan. 12 months down the line of the job, a better understanding of the squad. And for whatever reason, the signings, you've got Pepe's come in. Is he really a player that they needed? Then a last-minute David Luiz. Kieran Tierney from Celtic, who's a good player, but yet to prove himself in England. And he really struggled to find the right balance in the team. And the only thing I'm surprised about is I, I wondered whether the Arsenal board would be hesitant in making a decision. Because they have been in the past. Sure. I mean, they, they should have really, in my opinion... Uh, got rid of Wenger before he said, I'm going, because it, it, it went a bit stale for two or three years. But fair play to them. They've made a decision. I think it's the right one. Now they've got an even bigger one to make. Jules, it was just a few weeks ago we were talking about the possibility that he was going to be given time. When did the problems really start to go wrong? I think he was given time. I think he, he had a lot of time, a lot of chances to turn things around. They, they wanted to believe in him. They, they backed him up. They supported him a lot. And even before the Southampton game last week, there was a big meeting in, in Los Angeles with the, the Cronky family and Edu and, and Raul Sanieri as well. And they, they said, OK, what are we doing? We can sack him now or we could give him a bit more time and see what happens in the next few games. And that's what they chose. They chose the second option. He went on to draw in the last minute against Southampton, which was a miracle. And then that defeat against Frankfurt on, on Thursday night sealed his fate. And after that game, again, they had a meeting, they had a chat over the phone, and this time there was no other... His position was too untenable. There was no other choice to make than to sack him, and it just happened on Friday morning then. How much of it is it his fault? It's absolutely his fault. You know, he, I think I said it yesterday. You can... You can Pick holes in a manager for his tactics, for the way he picks his team, you know, how he picks his captain. But at the end of the day, as a coach, first and foremost, you have to get your players to go out and show a togetherness uh, and, a, and a fight for the club and for the jersey. That's the first thing you have to do because the rest, if you don't do those things, the rest doesn't really matter. In the Frankfurt game, the apathy from the players was mm. incredible. I mean, you talk about nobody's bothered and there wasn't a fan there that seemed to be bothered either so they, they really had no other choice said you obviously followed him closely in spain where he had his most successful spell as a coach are you surprised that he's come up short here not necessarily um because obviously the contexts are different in in each different club i think the the surprising thing for me in a way is the way that this, uh, the, the things that went wrong, the kind of things, the fact that defensively Arsenal weren't stronger, that he wasn't able to give them organisational structure, that he didn't seem to be able to give them that that kind of a, a aggressive ability to compete. That you know, we you look at Unai Emery in Spain and you would say, well, the flaws perhaps were that occasionally they couldn't compete with the very biggest teams, that occasionally he was too conservative, that he wasn't perhaps prepared to to, to take those teams on as equals. It. I don't think there were many times in Spain where you would look at Unai Emery and say, OK, his problem is going to be that he's not going to be able to organise a defence. And so I think in that sense, it's a surprise. Um, but the fact that it, didn't, that it didn't succeed, given the quality of the other managers in England, given the quality of the other teams in England, given the, the weaknesses in, in, in parts of the Arsenal squad, given some of the personalities that he had to confront, maybe that's less of a surprise. But as I say, the particular flaws, or some of the particular flaws, are... Yeah, I mean, it's a shame, really, because... And I'm not talking about Unai Emery, because I really feel sorry for top managers, because they get paid handsomely and rewarded for, for being sacked. Uh, but I, I kind of... You know, with Liverpool and Man City dominating at the moment, as they are, no club's got a divine right to be successful or competitive. But it's kind of a shame that Arsenal are in the position they're in, because they are one of the clubs that are capable, or should be capable of fighting for all the major honours. And it's, it's, it's a real shame to see how the decision-making over the last few years has just been so poor. You know, once they give uh, Mesut Ozil that new contract, I said at the start of the season, or before, he was a £300,000 a week headache for Unai Emery, which is 
exactly what he turned out to be. Now, even Unai Emery backtracked in the end because he was so desperate to try and find something for results. But I just scratched my head to what way they're going to go next. Yeah. When you see what, when you see the, the, the decisions been made at City, when you see the decisions been made at Liverpool, a clear plan of where they want to go for the future, both on and off the field. And then I look at the ownership and the Cronkies and the structure at Arsenal and now the management issues and on top of that, the player issues. And boy, it, it, this is a big ship to turn around. Who's, who's in charge of player recruitment? Because I don't care how good a coach you are. And, and I kind of agree with Sid in a way because, you know, yes, you, you can talk to your defenders and you can organise them and tell them when they should be there in a certain position, what they should be doing. But if you've got players who just can't do it, yeah. then you have to, between the manager and the recruitment guy, you have to change the staff. And so after 12 months, as Craig said, when he'd figured everything out, what he had, they did absolutely nothing about, def about buying somebody to defend. In fact, they go out and buy a guy who, as good as he is on the ball, can't defend David Luiz. So... Between Unai Emery and whoever's in charge of bringing players in, it's a complete disaster. How deep-rooted are these problems, Jules? Well, the interesting thing about that all is that when Wenger left, and even before that, Ivan Gazidis, who was obviously the CEO and is not there anymore, started restructuring the club because he had to... Wenger was such a huge figure that him going or him about to go, I mean, to replace one man, they had to replace him with a few people. So... Edu came in as a sporting director, which was long needed. Someone who would be the link between the board and the first team, overlook also the, the youth teams. Per Metesaka came in as the academy director, which again was needed. Then you had the split between the two CEO. You know, on one side, uh, Vinay Venkatesham, who is the guy with all the address, uh, administrative side. And then Raul Sanieli, the former Barcelona director, who is the head of football there. So they believe in terms of structure, they, they, they're where they should be and they have that good structure and everything. Then we can talk about the recruitment in the summer, but at the time, apart from David Luiz, which, by the way, was by far not their first choice as centre-back, they tried maybe five or six other options as centre-back, couldn't sign any, and he was really the last chance, the one that they could sign at the end with a bit of experience. Laurent Koscielny has, had left the day before, let's not forget, so they were even shorter than before because Koscielny had gone back home to Bordeaux. So then Luis was, OK, we can do him. He's quite cheap, but he's got loads of experience. Let's bring him in. He was never the first choice. That was never the idea behind the whole plan. So there were, there were flaws, in, in a way, in the recruitment, but also they felt the structure around everything is good. The money, they, the way they invested it was quite good and quite clever, but yet he hasn't worked out, so they will be looking at it as well. Who's going to be the new coach, Jules? Freddie Ljungberg, the, the plan A is to give Ljungberg some time. They're hoping, really hoping that there will be something happening with, with the squad, with him. The, he's a very popular figure. The boys really like him. He had a very powerful speech this morning, his first one as manager at the training run in the dressing room. So they really believe this will have a positive impact, that he can turn things around, even if he doesn't really have any experience as a first team manager. And if that works, then, then the plan is to review the position in the summer because they believe that they will have more candidates, which is true, in the summer than now. Let's say they want Brandon Rodgers. It would be more likely for him to agree to come to Arsenal in the summer, in the off-season, than to do it right now when he has a very good project on, on route already with Leicester, for example. It would be the same with Eddie Howe. Um, and maybe for Mikel Arteta as well. They believe that it might be easier in the summer to get the one they really want more than now during the season when we're only at the beginning of December. But if plan A doesn't work and if Lundberg is a disaster and there's no win in the next three, four, maybe five games, then they will look at plan B, which is appointing someone now, maybe if he was not originally, initially their first choice, and maybe go with a lot of experience, someone who would then steady the ship, maybe someone like, I don't know, Max Allegri, if he's ready to take a club mid-season, for example, but the plan A is really to give a chance to Ljungberg, give him some time, and then see what happens. Two of the biggest clubs in Europe, and certainly in England, Man United and Arsenal, have just gone out in such desperation. They're just happy to hang their hats on, well, Solskjaer did have management experience. There's no, you can't deny that. But Freddie Ljungberg, no. And, and so that's the scenario that, that they're in. Uh, if I was Mikel Arteta, although I played at Arsenal, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. 
Pep Guardiola is not going to stay at Manchester City forever. He's the right-hand man up there at the moment. And I, my own personal opinion is I think City might look to promote from within. So if he's got any brains, which I'm sure he has, he's probably going to sit tight. I think Brendan Rodgers is probably, uh, at this moment in time, I have one of the high stocks. But I agree with Jules. I think what he's doing at Leicester and what he's got at Leicester is better than what is at Arsenal at the moment. So it, it, it's a real difficult quandary for the club. But in some sense, it's their own making because with all that restructuring, they allowed it to happen too late. They allowed Asim Wenger, as good as he was, to hang on and hang on and hang on and make his own decision that he was going to leave when that decision should have been made for him quite a, well, at least two to three years before that. And then they maybe wouldn't have been so far behind the eight ball where they are at the moment. Freddie Lumber, do you like this? Why? <laughs> we gave a nice speech. The players oh, lovely. Are That's great. Good lad. Well done. No. Listen, Arsenal's a huge club. They need a character. Allegri's a character. Listen, he, to me, he seems like he takes no nonsense from anybody, regardless of who they are or where they've been. And the fact that Arsenal interviewed him once before and the word is that they felt that he was wanting too much charge. Well, you know what? You didn't take him then because you wanted to be in charge. You stayed in charge. You made a mess of it. You brought a guy in who already at a big club and PSG showed he couldn't handle the players, you go and get this guy. This guy knows what he's doing. You give him what he wants to get your club back to where it is. Because in case they've forgotten, Arsenal are languishing in the middle of the Premier League and they're dropping quickly. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.